going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This is part two of my first installment, my 12 and 12 series, where I'm attempting to play one new course every month this year, taking you guys along for the journey. If you haven't checked out part one, which was the front nine here at Wild Horse Golf Course in Davis, California, check down in the description below and I'll leave a link to that first video. Also stay tuned towards the end of the video because I'm gonna give a quick recap of what I thought the course and the conditions on this particular day. We'll take you guys along on the back nine. Hopefully we can turn it around. Let's see. So after waiting for three groups ahead of us to tee off, we finally get our chance here on number 10 and I proceed to yank my drive well to the left here. The second shot here with a eight iron. Kind of just block it out a little bit to the right again. Another subpar iron shot. It ended up in the bunker. I did end up finding the green side bunker here, but I'm able to splash it out to about 20 feet and have a look at a par here. I give the par putt a good chance, but it does just creep by on the left hand side and I'm able to tap in for a bogey to move to plus seven. Trusted the guys I was playing with here when they told me the fairway opened up on the other side of these trees, so I just took it over the top of them, left myself in a good position with just a gap wedge in. And I hit a good shot right over the flag. It did go a little deep, but I did have a downhill look at a birdie putt here. Had good speed here on this putt, but the line was just off just a little bit. Missed it on the high side, left myself with about foot foot and a half here for a par but I'm able to tap that in to convert the par another par three that I'm not able to convert a green in regulation kind of block this one out again to the right hand side fortunate it stays in out of the penalty area make a decent little chip here at about six six and a half feet and have a chance to save a par but it does just slide by on the right hand side so with that bogey on number 12, that moves me to two over on the back nine, eight over total. Hit a decent tee shot here in the middle of the fairway. Leave myself with a good position. Just trying to lay up with a hybrid. And this ball just kept fading. It was safe though, and I had a seven iron in hand. But the theme of the day, another terrible iron shot out to the right hand side. After I hit this fourth shot here, the battery dies on my camera, but all you end up missing was me three putting for a double bogey, so nothing too exciting. After that terrible three putt, I step up to the tee shot here on 14 and hit the best iron shot of the day. Finally hit a green on a par three, right over the flag, little deep, actually quite a bit deep, but have this putt pretty well online, just come up a little short, leave myself about two feet for a par. I'm able to convert. Hole 15 is another tee shot where the landing area is actually a lot bigger than what it looks like from the tee box. And I'm able to hit a good tee shot here, leave myself just a nine iron in. But I catch the nine iron just a little heavy, come up just a little bit short of the green. From here with my 60 degree wedge, I kind of pull it just to the left of the hole here not a great chip but I do have a chance at a par and I just miss slightly on the right hand side and this thing rolls past a good four four and a half feet but I'm able to make that for a bogey hit a terrible tee shot here on number 16 pulled it well left into the thick rough fortunate that I was even able to find the ball just trying to punch out with a wedge <laughs> Wow! and yeah catch the limb there and instead of taking my time to go see where I want to land this ball, I just get up with the wedge, hit it again, and proceed to put it right in a bunker. And that's why course knowledge is so valuable. So I'm stuck in this bunker. It's got hard, compacted sand. Get up and hit a decent shot from there. I was so frustrated with this hole. After that bunker shot, I didn't even mark my ball. Just got up, putted it, had a chance to save a bogey. And notice as I'm tapping in for double that there was a little bit of mud on the ball. What do you think of that, Bubba? Mud ball! 17 has a lake all down the left-hand side, but you can get aggressive and cut some of the distance off by taking on the lake. Whoa! Carried it, carried it? Yep. Oh, nice. 
<laughs> what are you meant to go over there? Not that far. Not that far, yeah. Wow. Took a bit of a dangerous route and cut the corner here over this lake, over all of this junk, and just barely cleared it to right there. Wasn't exactly my intended route, but it worked out. However, that lake does go all the way down the left-hand side, and I'm not going to lie, was a little scared by it. Kind of just favored the right. Left myself with just a gap wedge in here. Hit another decent shot, but again, just a tad long past the hole. Very difficult putt here. Over a ridge, down the hill. Stop. Slow down. Had about six feet back up the hill to save a par. I was able to convert that. We ended up waiting so long on the 18th tee that the three guys I was paired up with had to take off, and the group behind me ended up joining me for this 18th hole. Hit my drive to here and just hitting a 7-iron, staring right into the sun. Barely saw where it landed. Come up just a little bit short of the greenside bunker here. Hit my wedge about 15 feet left of the flag here and have a chance to salvage a par to end the round here. Give it a good try, but do come up just a little bit short to the left. For what? Able to tap in here for a bogey. For a back nine score of 44, an overall score of an 86 on the round. So that's gonna wrap up the round out here at Wild Horse and Davis. Enjoyed the round. Kind of, kind of gives me a feel of a little bit like a link style course. Uh, just didn't play particularly well. I think I ended up shooting an 86. I didn't putt well. I had some terrible chips. Definitely need to put some work in and get these scores down. 86 is not where I want to be. I'd like to come back and try this course, you know, spring or summer when, when everything's a little bit more green and less muddy. And but I enjoyed it. Thanks for coming along. Remember, if you liked the video, hit that like button down there. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, leave me some comments. Let me know what you think of this course if you played it. Thanks, guys. Just wanted to give a little bit more of an in-depth review on the course. Now, I do have to keep in mind that these were wintertime conditions. So I can only give the conditions based on what I played. But let's start with the tee boxes. I'd give them a 5 out of 10. They did have some good winter wear to them fairways i would give a six out of ten i imagine in the summertime these fairways roll quite a bit they're pretty wide open and forgiving uh, it did remind me of a little bit of a link style course rolling hills wide open fairways very little trees and lots of bunkers for the greens, I would give them a 7 out of 10. Even in wintertime, they were in fairly decent shape, and you could tell that these things are well-maintained during the summer months. The bunkers were really my only complaint on the course. The sand in them were pretty hard and compacted, and very little sand in some of them. But again, it's winter conditions, so that's to be expected. Plus, with COVID and not having rakes in it, no one's really maintaining their bunkers at this point. I'm going to rank the rough as a 7 out of 10 just because there really wasn't a whole lot of rough, even in the winter here. Uh, very forgiving. Like I said, if you ever got offline of the fairways, you could find your ball fairly easily, and it was still fairly playable. Fairways themselves were cut really short, so it's a very playable course. That's one thing I did like about it. And lastly, I'll just give it my overall ranking. I'll give it a 6 out of a 10. I did enjoy the course. I did have fun playing it. It was fairly decent conditions, even for winter time, but it just kind of lacked that wow factor for me. So I don't know that I would really set out to play here again, being the distance from my house, but I did enjoy it. And if you're in the area, it's definitely well worth playing. Thanks guys. Appreciate you watching these.